Hey guys, Joe here, doing a quick video on a computer. And if you read the title, you would know exactly what this is. Kinda. As the title says, I spent 15 times more money on the computer that's behind you than I did on the i3-2120 system. Now, for those of you that watched the 2120 video, you'll know that that means I spent 150 US dollars. The reason I did that will become abundantly clear as we walk through the system. Now, I will say that I have actually modified the system a little bit already, and I will point out the three things I did to it since I picked it up yesterday. A little bit of a backstory about it. On OfferUp, which is kind of like Craigslist, but not really, there was a gentleman selling this thing because he said he was moving. Now, this thing has been on OfferUp for a few months. I just saw it. I never used OfferUp to look for computer equipment because in my area, a lot of like the video game stuff is just duplicates of what's already on Craigslist. That makes it not really worth doing anything with because who cares? Why look at two sites for the exact same item? So I'd never looked for computer equipment on OfferUp. This time I did. And I'm glad I did because it turns out that on offer up there is a ton more stuff and this isn't a plug for offer up it's just it's a good resource to consider after craigslist i messaged this guy because he had this computer listed and i asked him if he would sell me just the motherboard and the cpu because it's all i really wanted and if he would take less money for it and he said no i want to sell it complete i really don't want to part it out so i was like that's fine if you change your mind let me know so about three days later, he contacts me back and says, look, I'm moving next Wednesday, or actually this Wednesday, tomorrow, I'm not sure what day you're watching this, on the 14th, and he wanted to know if I wanted to buy the system. And he threw out the number $150. Then he said he'd throw in a 24-inch monitor as well. And I thought about it for a second, and only for a second, because I had seen the specs before, and for $150, you will actually appreciate why I jumped at the chance. So I messaged him back, said yes, no problem. I went to meet him. Turns out he's going back to China. And I'm assuming, because I've mailed stuff to Australia, and it's cost a arm and a leg. So sending a computer like you're about to see to China with a monitor and everything, it's probably cheaper to just go to China buy all new components, and put another system together. So that's my assumption. Let me show you the system now, and I will talk you through what it has, what it does, and what I intend to do with it. So as you can see from my reflection, this is component number one. This is a Dell S2440L monitor. It's a 24 inch. It's one of those ones where it's shiny all the way to the edge even though the monitor you can see the line break for where the actual screen is it's an led monitor apparently it's with the illuminati i guess i don't know what that symbol means but it is a 1080p full hd and it's hdmi surprisingly it does not have any dvi inputs but that's okay i don't really need to use dvi here's a secret for you and i'll put it right here so that you can read it dvi and hdmi are the same DVI just does not carry sound. Thumb. All right, now, that on its own, even used, is probably a $100 monitor because it's a really good monitor. And what's funny is I still have to download the um, manual for it because everything is in Chinese. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm stuck with the main screen being in Chinese until I download the manual for it, but it's not a big deal. That is a full tower in there. It is ginormous, huge antic, my goodness, size case. Not sure who makes it because it doesn't have any branding on it, but I think it might be a thermal take. If anybody knows, if you could please leave that in the message. It does have drive bays. It actually has seven available drive bays. However, I'm only using one for a DVD rewritable. And it has a pretty nice looking I.O set up up here. Uh, that's my Asus dual band Wi-Fi. I love this thing. It works great. Um, Illumini style buttons, headphone jack, mic jack, eSATA connection up top. When I got it, it had one stick of Corsair Vengeance DDR3 RAM in it, and that's about it. But here, let me show you the inside of this thing so you can see why it's so good. That thing is enormous inside. 
Starting with the power supply, it's a Thermaltake Smart 650 watt 80 plus bronze. However, it does not have a modular or semi-modular design. It just is a standard setup and his cable management is pretty atrocious. But this case, even though it's huge, is not really good for cable management. It's got cutouts, but no grommets or anything. Underneath this giant cooler is a Intel Core i5 2500K processor. It's on the 1155 socket, so it's nice to have a really nice overclockable 1155 board. So that will allow me to, sometime down the road, I can throw in an i7 Sandy Bridge processor, and that will be good. Because the only other 1155 socket board I have is the one in there, and that one's junk because it's all proprietary. This one will go into any case. Not sure the brand on this cooler here. It might be a Cooler Master, I'm not sure. It had an aftermarket fan on it that was noisy. It was one of those Gamer Storm ones, but it sounded like the bearings were going out. So I threw a Cooler Master fan off of my old Hyper 212 Evo LED on here. So it does have red LEDs on there. I threw an NZXT fan in the back here uh, because the fan that was in there was not hooked up and reason being is probably because you can see how little reach there is up there with the cooler installed i'm assuming he must have put the system together and then tried to hook up the other fans and then realized it wasn't going to work if you can read that this is a z77 saber tooth motherboard as you can see it's got the uh, protective cover over the motherboard and this is a pretty solid board i really do enjoy it the uefi is really nice in it however i still have to finish updating the bios i took out the single sticker ram it had in there and i stuck in four sticks uh they are of odd capacity so it is only running 12 gigs right now but whatever it's doing fine and this card is the main reason why i bought the damn thing of course, it's too far away for me to focus in on, but this is a R9280X Overclock Edition from Asus. As much as I admire this case, that case is going to go away eventually. Probably not for a month or so. Not that there's anything wrong with the case, it's just that it's too damn big. My intention is to eventually stick it in like an NZXT S340 Elite case, which I really like, or possibly a Leon Lee tempered glass case. Okay, so here we are in the main BIOS screen, and like I said, this is actually a really nice monitor. I like the picture, it looks good. Uh, it's an old, old, old build. BIOS version is from 2012, so I definitely need to upgrade that. And as you can see, it's an i5-2500K at 3.3 gigahertz, and it has 12 gigs of DDR3 RAM in it. Uh, when I first got it, the BIOS was all in Chinese because the gentleman obviously was Chinese. As you can see, I have it um, overclocked right now to 4.7 gigahertz. RAM is still staying at 8, 1333. I did increase voltage a little bit. It really was pulling almost no voltage, which was impressive because it was pulling like 1.19 volts. So I increased the threshold to 1.39 volts, 1.395 volts, and it seems to be pretty damn stable. Uh, other than that, I've left pretty much everything alone. I'd like to put in better RAM because the RAM that's in there is, you know, 1333 megahertz, and it's not doing much. But as you can see, it runs nice and cool. And, uh, yeah, so let me boot it into Windows, and we will run the Cinebench and talk about it. Okay, I've decided that I need to change that case. It is too damn big, it's too damn obtrusive, and it's just not me. So I'm going to go ahead and change everything over. I've also done a fresh install of Windows 10 because I had so many different graphics cards and motherboards and everything linked to that hard drive that it just... <coughs> so yeah, I did a fresh install. I updated all the BIOS for the motherboard, the graphics card, everything. So now it's just switch everything over and then we'll come back to it. And I don't have an Elite case, but I'm just going to put it in my old S340, even though the side is open. Before I move everything, just a refresher, this is the i3 system that I built using an old Dell Optiplex that had the wrong processor in it and a GTX, excuse me, GTS 450 and Wi-Fi adapter and stuff. So, yeah, that's going away right now. Too bright. Way too bright. Anyways, um... I changed everything over as I said I would, so let me show you that, and I'm much happier that it's in this case, because this case is smaller. It's an old S340 that I've had laying around, if you remember from 
that video, I actually broke the plexi that was on the side and I took the plexi off, which is convenient because I needed some place to put the uh, CD-ROM because I don't have an external DVD player. So here, let's take a look. So this is an old S340 case. The difference between an Elite and the Standard is the Elite has a completely tempered glass side and one more spot for another uh, SSD. That is not the case with this um, case. So anyways, it's wide open, that's okay, there's nothing in here to really create dust or fur or anything like that unless I start shedding again. And it allowed me to just stick the DVD drive in there. Again, if that's going to have to work until I get a DVD drive for it. The cooler is a pain in the ass, but it's in there. I have one NZXT fan back there, one down there, and I'm going to put a third one up there. I just found the other one. I didn't want to run one that had the mustard colored cables because I'm trying to not show all the cabling. This needs to be wrapped underneath because it looks really stupid the way it is. And then I got to get some black paint and touch up the bridge there where all the cabling scratched it. But other than that, it's all installed. I did a fresh install of Windows 10 on the SSD. The one terabyte Western Digital Black is back where it was. And I'm using the 750 watt power supply. Okay, with just some light tweaking on it, um, I got a 633 Cinebench, which is pretty damn good. Uh, I had the RAM modules in backwards, so I went ahead and swapped those around so that the better ones were in the lead. And as you can see at 4. Point, I have it set to 4.7. Now, I'm not going to keep it at 4.7, even though it seems pretty stable, because on air, I'm not comfortable running a 1.4 gigahertz overclock. So yeah, 633 Cinebench, that's better than Linus Tech Tips when they did the latest Scrapyard Wars, and they were running a i7-3770. So, here we go. I'm going to update the BIOS now, since it hasn't been updated in five years, and I think that will uh, hopefully make things better. So yeah, I got it running to about 4.5 gigahertz right now. I had it up to 4.7, which actually got me a Cinebench of 633, which was pretty damn good. So updating the BIOS and making sure all the best drivers were installed was a good idea. I also bumped up the voltage a little bit because it was only at like 1.325, so I bumped it up to 1.39, and that seemed to give it a little bit more power, and that cooler should be good enough to handle it. I got it to run at 4.9, but it derped out when I tried to run Cinebench, so I backed it down. I just wanted to get over a 600, and even at 4.5, I'm getting 618, so that's good. That's plenty enough for me. Uh, I wish it was an 8-core. It would be way better, but still, it works. So, anyways, if you have any questions, leave those down below. If you have any comments, leave those down below. If you'd like to see uh, more videos, um, I'm backwards again. If you'd like to subscribe, go ahead and click on my face. Hello. If you'd like to become a Patreon, let me know. You'll get access to videos earlier since I'm only doing a couple a week now. And uh, there should be a couple of videos that populate right there. Sorry, my old phone had the camera up higher than this one. This one is down here, not up there. So I keep looking in the wrong spot. But otherwise, talk to you later.